Good evening, I'm Cooper Zelnick, and welcome to PCN. Tonight we have two stories for you. First, reporter Ellie Sherwin has a story about the role of celebrities in the presidential election and new media. And then, reporter Axel Lindy asks the question, does the American viewer blur the lines between opinion, straight reporting, and subliminal bias? First up, Obama and celebrities. Ellie, what did you find out? Thanks, Cooper. We discussed how President Obama used his media presence to collect celebrity endorsements on his way to the White House. In a country where political opinion runs the gamut, the recent presidential election has yielded a result that breaks free from such a truism and edifies our unbridled want for change and hope. It is without question that the American people have put their trust and hopes and dreams in the hands of President Barack Obama. The key to his success has revealed a path rarely taken, one that sidesteps run-of-the-mill campaign tactics. President Obama was successfully able to use a combination of celebrity endorsements and news media to figuratively light his unprecedented and historic path to the White House. We visited David Pecker, CEO of American Media, to inquire why the country was so enamored with President Barack Obama and see just how it is, he wagered. David Pecker had several of the country's top tabloid and journal magazines, such as National Enquirer, The Star, The Sun, and Men's Fitness Magazine. You may have recognized that many of these magazines were actively involved during the campaign process, publishing stories and articles on the candidate's personal and professional lives. As chief executive officer of a corporation that produces political as well as gossip um, celebrity magazines, do you feel that during this last election, um, gossip and political stories tended to converge? Uh, yes, I do, because you know the basic foundation of tabloid journalism is to expose the hypocrisy of the rich and famous and that extends to politician as celebrities as well. Star Jones, former host of The View and avid supporter of Obama, speaks on his portrayal as a celebrity. He was turned into a pop culture icon. That's true. That's absolutely true. I think the media had a little bit of a love affair with him. Um, the tall, dark, and handsome candidate it was reminiscent of uh, John Kennedy. He represented youth, he represented change, he was a great orator, and people of my generation, in, uh, at the time of the Kennedy era, which was the time of Camelot, there were people remembered about. So you had the older generation and the younger generation looking for the change in America, and, and that's what he represented. So no matter what bad things came out about uh, Obama, he was like the Teflon man. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cared about it. They really wanted only to read really or, or believed into good things. This can be attributed to the media's portrayal of Obama in such a positive way. I think Obama got a huge pass from the media. And I think it's because the media took its hint from the public. The public liked him. The public wanted him. And I think the media followed suit. You know, who would ever dream, dream that or think that the President of the United States would be on the cover of Men's Health magazine right. because of his workouts? Mm -hmm. People also saw him smoking cigarettes, you know, which he had, to, he, had to, he had to give up. People seen him with his kids. People seen him taking his kids to school. People seen him going to Hawaii. I, I think uh, media had the biggest role on this uh, because of the celebrity right. uh, ism of, of Obama had. Uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, when you take a look at all the other celebrities that came out in favor of Obama, every major mm -hmm. celebrity from, uh, from Brad Pitt to, uh, to Barbara Streisand. I think motivating people to get involved in the process is absolutely imperative. One thing that Sean Combs did um, with uh, sort of the urban environment mm -hmm. was use the diddiness of him to make people excited. He used videos, he used YouTube, he used music. He mm -hmm. used everything at his disposal that he uses to make money right. on sort of the hip hop generation. And he used it to the advantage of the candidate of his choice. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very, very good. Um, and his efforts to influence a generation when his celebrity. When you make your living in the public eye, you have great access. I say you have great responsibility, but you have great access. And instead of using your celebrity to get a better table at a restaurant, using your celebrity to influence people and getting them involved in the process, I would say is a better use of your celebrity. 
Many believe that Obama's historic election will serve as a model for those to come. I think that, that all, all future presidential campaigns will follow what he's done. From PCN, this is Ellie Sherwin. Thanks, Ellie. Axel Lindy has been asking Americans about their knowledge of current issues. Hi, this is Axel Lindy reporting for PCN. Today we are interviewing people about the recent election uh, pertaining to where they got their information and whether or not that information was biased. Do you feel that the, um, that the networks actually gave a fair portrayal of the candidates? Um, yes, you know, but obviously as human beings we all have our biases, so just got to listen to different channels and filter the information for yourself. It was a little slanted, but I think they also tried to provide a bit of a balance. How so? Um... I just think whenever they would actually let the candidates speak for themselves. I think all of them probably did, um, some more than others. You mean the spinsters? <laughs> so I take it you, do, you, you feel that their information is biased? Uh, of course. Of course they're somewhat biased. Of course. There's a very important difference between, between bias and opinion. Right. Bias is a prejudice Against. that you're unaware of. Uh, that skews your coverage towards or away from candidates and points of view. Bias is actually a bad, insidious thing because under the guise of straightforward reporting, you're actually doing reporting, perhaps even unawares to you, that is not straightforward, either based on the stories you select, the emphasis you give. The opinion is something entirely different. Opinion is out there for all the world to see. So when a Bill O'Reilly, a Lou Dobbs, uh, Keith Olbermann, uh, Sean Hannity expresses an opinion about a political candidate, about a political policy, about a political event. That's not bias. That's a point of view uh, that there's no deception of the viewer or the listener there. You can either agree with it or not, but no one's being fooled. You know that they are commentators. They don't pretend to be straight. There are people who watch opinion either because they think it's news and don't know the difference, or they think it's the same as news, or because they prefer opinion. They like to have their own opinion validated by somebody who can do it in a compelling, articulate way. Now, when everybody has his or her own set of facts, uh, that particular model becomes harder to achieve. All that said, though, uh, there isn't a better model. There is, there's no way we can wish away uh, ignorance or prejudice um, we, unfortunately, you can't wish away pandering to people's worst instincts. What you have to hope is that enough citizens uh, get enough exposure to enough valid, verifiable, responsible, credible sources of information that uh, when all is said and done, you get a good result as a society. We're betting on that for the future of the democracy. When I say we, I don't mean the media. We as citizens, you and I, Axel, are betting on that uh, for our futures. That's all we have for you tonight. For PCN, I'm Cooper Zelnick.